What's going on, Dolph Addicts? DB of the Tour Junkies here. I got Pat Perry, my boy. We're the Tour Junkies. It's the Arnold Palmer Invitational 2022, and I am pumped. We're coming off another winner. Shout out to Pat Perry. 140 to 1, Seth Straka. Woo! Woo! Pat, how you feeling, baby? Man, I'm feeling good. Seth Straka. God damn. 140 to 1. Straka the dog. Flock. You know, it's like you said, this is the year of the dog. We hit Hudson Swafford already. We get to, we get that natty. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you something. Um, Matt Stafford gets the Super Bowl ring. Yes. Just been a great year. But, you know, there are a lot of dogs on tour. So, I mean, the odds are that they're they're going to show up. Yeah. Happen. Dude, props to you. That's your Thank sixth you. outright of the season. There have been 18 events. Okay. Sixth outright of the season. I have three. We have half of the tournaments, one of us is getting it. I mean, this is just, this is probably not going to keep going. So, I mean, everybody, we need to set level expectations here. We got a lot of new listeners, a lot of new followers here in the last few weeks. It's golf betting. It's it's wild. It's crazy. You got to have thick skin for this stuff. You lose more than you win, uh, except for these first 18 events of the season for us, which I'm pumped about. One of the tools that helps us win is our friends at covers.com because winning starts at covers.com. And, you know, it's where you go to start your betting process. The show tonight is presented to you by Covers. And uh, listen, it's it's got everything you need. It's got NBA stuff. It's got NHL stuff. If they ever start to play baseball again, it's got some of that. Uh, obviously, so there's some golf content over there, and it's about to get a lot better. Up to the minute odd screens, free betting contests, expert analysis over all the games. Every, a lot of stuff is free. There's a forum with over 500,000 members. You can get in there and mix it up. Covers serves over 20 million sports bettors annually. And they've been doing it for 25 years. They've been around a long time. This is not some fly-by-night startup operation, okay? They know what they're doing. And it's also the only place you can get the exclusive piece of content from us, our favorite head-to-heads, our favorite top 20s. It's a free, about a four or five-minute read uh, over on covers.com. You can check that out. It's free. You don't have to join. You don't have to do anything. So we appreciate covers. Great website. Pat, uh, tonight I'm mixing it up on you a little bit. Oh, the podcast okay. you I've just poured myself, I don't know why I did this, but just poured myself a lovely Guinness. Oh, that looks excellent. Doesn't this look good? Yeah. Mm. Do it, do it, good sip and get some on your nose. Get a little of that foam on your nose. Yeah. I didn't get on my nose, but yeah, didn't stay there. <clears throat> um that looks good delicious. Stuff. What you got? I have uh so you know, I, you as you can tell, I got I got my bulldog shirt on tonight. Yes. I know it's got stripes. Producer Sam doesn't like stripes. Sorry, producer Sam. Oh, yeah. This is the this I, I needed the bulldog theme tonight. Um, but I am drinking from Creature Comforts oh, Brewing great. Company out of Athens, Georgia. Yes. A little classic city lager. If anybody doesn't know, Athens is a uh, little nickname is the classic city. And this is a pretty good lager right here from from Creature Comforts. So. Yeah, love Creature Comforts. The Tropicalia is one of my favorites. Tropicalia is really good. Um, hey, listen, if you're in the chat, if you're watching live, hit the thumbs up button. Go ahead and subscribe if you're on YouTube. It's been a great week, Pat. We're off to a great start. I mean, the Sepp Straka hit was just so beautiful, man. I mean, to think Berger up by five shots was going to cough that one up. And, you know, you talked about him on the podcast. You talked about him on the DraftKings After Dark show, and obviously he was on your card. And uh, we mentioned him in the Nut Hut the night before. He was in the Ten Facts that I'm sure Ben Little would love to talk would love to talk about. He was in the mm-hmm. Ten Facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was a good week, man. It was a great week. Uh, I'm excited about this week, though. We've got a really good feel for the Arnold Palmer Invitational yeah. at Bay Hill. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, just a couple housekeeping notes for the week. There is a DP World Tour event this week. It's the Magical Kenya Open. I don't know. It's what makes it magical. It's magical, Pat. It's just magic, buddy. You, uh, is it in is is there a Disney World in in Kenya? Uh, I don't know Disney Disney over Kenya. I mean, my wife just went to Kenya in the fall. Uh, I don't believe she saw. I'm pretty sure she didn't see Disney World. I just I don't know why. You know, whenever I hear the word magical, I immediately think of something Disney related. 100. percent Well, I mean, good job. They've done a good job marketing that to you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anyway, Mark Mark Hill is back. 
So we're, you know, subscribe to the DP World Tour Junkies podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Check it out here on our YouTube channel. We'll have that going for you. And, uh, you know, if maybe the people have noticed, maybe they haven't. This is DB's first day officially as a full time tour junkies. And I've already been pumping out some content. So you need to know yeah. what's going on. Uh, I, I, I dropped a little live odds reaction on YouTube to this morning. I'm going to, I possibly might do that every Monday. Just as soon as the odds hit, I'm not going to look at them. I'm going to turn the camera on and go and we'll just have a conversation about it, see what we think. Uh, a couple of interesting names in there I threw out that I'm I'm looking forward to talking with you about tonight, Pat. Um, I didn't the, watch. I watched the beginning, but then when you started really getting into it, I, yeah. I didn't really want to because I, I that doesn't give me a good, good. you know. I, I don't like want to know what you're thinking. Way to stay committed. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's good. Yeah. Good, good for you. Um, also, I, I did a I did an extensive course breakdown. So one change up to the Tour Junkies podcast moving forward is uh, after seven years, Pat is not going to do the, the weekly course breakdown. Here. <laughs> and it's not because he didn't do a, a great, fantastic job, in his words. Mm. Um, but it's just because it's content we can get out earlier in the week, and people that want to start their, their process earlier, we're going to try to get it out you know, Monday morning at the latest. This time we got it out Sunday. Um, but it's, you know, it's going to be good. It's on the YouTube channel. It's also on the podcast feed. I'm going to try to knock that out in like 10 to 12 minutes a week and just give you exactly what you need. Nothing more, nothing, well, nothing more, nothing less. Just what you need, okay? Stats, trends, information about the course, features, um, it, some player quotes, all that good stuff. So go ahead and check that out if you want that information that's there. We're not going to give it to you tonight. We're going to get straight into the picks here in just a minute. So that's, that's something you need to be on the lookout for. Coming tomorrow, every Tuesday in the afternoon, I'm going to drop some head-to-head -head information on you people, all right? I'm going to go through the head-to-head -head lines, and I'm going to talk through some head-to-head -head numbers that I like, some uh, some some matchup bets. Might talk a little bit on the props or top 20 side maybe, but probably just stick to head-to-heads. I'm looking forward to that. I love looking at head-to-head -head lines, and not just the ones that I think. Actually, if you're if you're a DFS player, this is you need to pay attention to this, not just the head-to-head -head lines from a betting perspective, but also what do they tell us about, about players on DraftKings? Is there a head-to-head -head line where – you know, a player projected at 20% in GPPs or 25% in GPPs is a, you know, a coin toss or maybe he's a dog to somebody who's at 10% or not getting a lot of love. You know, that could that could speak to some leverage there, leverage opportunity. Uh, maybe we'll see a little line movement as well by the time that comes out. So that should be fun. The only other thing we need to hit up this week, Pat, before we get into the picks, is the live golf event in September in Pennsylvania. The first ever Tour Junkies live golf event. We talked about it. We announced it a few weeks ago. We talked mm -hmm. about it last week. We opened it up for ticket sales last week, but we opened it up strictly to Nut Hut members only. We said that was only going to go a week. I think we're going to go one more week. We've decided that we're going to go one more week where the only way you can buy a ticket to this first ever live golf event in September with me and Pat, all the Tour Junkies family, it's going to be bananas, okay? The only way you can buy that ticket now for the next week is through the Nut Hut. You have to be a member, a VIP member of the Nut Hut. Uh, we've already had some great sales. In fact, you know, the Friday event is the first event of the weekend. It's the Ryder Cup style, Team DB versus Team Pat. Right now, Pat, you got to recruit some guys. Is there anything you need to say, or do you want to? I mean, hey, look, look I mean, strong. we we got, I will say this, a little little teaser here. Uh, we got a very good recruit this evening, a very good one, and I'm Did pretty, you? I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I don't even think you know yet. Hmm. Um, if you went into the chat, you would know. Um, I was in the chat today. I, in fact, I saw some LPGA chat. That uh, was were you in there this evening, though? Yeah, I was. I was in there this evening. Yes. Okay. Well, there was a big announcement and a great video that you, you should uh, probably watch. Maybe you could watch it live on the show. I, I don't know. It, it, it's a, it's a long one though. So. No. Um, but I got a really good team member today, an anchor, if you will. I know who you got. And so I, I'm pretty excited about that. And you I got think, Kistler, didn't you? You got Kistler, didn't you? I, I I may have. I may have gotten Kistler. And, you know, I think it's just, it's kind of like when you get Kistler on your team. Kistler has been a long time Tour Junkies fan. Not not just of me. Not just of me, DB. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, both of us. Mm-hmm. But he's he uh I think it's gonna the floodgates are now open. The floodgates are now open for Team Pat. And I feel like now Team D B needs to go a little bit. I mean, you're on the defensive now. You're on the defensive. I I am I am on the offense. Um 
we have some really good players on the team. And um, I'd like to say I'm concerned about your team, but I'm really not. I'm not really concerned. I'm only concerned about Team Pat and uh, pretty excited about uh, what, what's going on right now. Okay. Well, I mean, there's only, let's see, I think we are, uh, I think there are maybe three spots, four spots left on Team DB, maybe five or six left on Team Pat for now. So if you're going to want to get all, you know, we're about, we're about quality. Yeah. Not just quantity. No, I mean, I, no, I get that. I mean, it's, it's, but the Friday event's going to be a limited situation. So, yeah. um, that, that, that event is going to be real. That, that one's going to be real chaotic, but I'm excited about it. September 23rd, 24th. You need to go ahead and get it on the calendar. You want to get in on that and, and join the nut hut. You, you need to, I'll put the, I'll put the, well, no, I can't do that yet. So one more week, Nut Hut members only can buy a ticket. That's it. After next week, we're opening up to the public. Bing, bang, boom. All right. I think that's it for announcements. Anything else I'm forgetting? Anything? Do we know? Uh, Fantasy Golf Sommelier, don't forget Tuesday night. Or, well, comes out Wednesday. We got prize picks. So Yeah. Uh, We'll talk prize picks here in just a minute as well. Um, You know, I gave – actually, oh, no. I, I knew there was something else I was forgetting. Next week for the players. Players is going to be a big week, right? Yes. Huge week. Biggest week of the year so far. Uh, the Players Championship. I'm thrilled to say that I will be in person with Pat at Pat's house doing the show. We're going to do the show together in some strange setup up there where Pat is now. We're not sure exactly how that's going to look. It's probably not going to be fantastic. But we're going to have a fun podcast. Me and Pat in person, in the flesh, breaking down the Players Championship. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, I, I will be making my way down to Ponte Vedra Beach. I'll be at the Players' Championship on Tuesday and Wednesday. If you're out there, holler at me. Um, I'll, I'll be getting some dirt on the players, on the course, on conditions, all that stuff. Be reporting all that back to the Nut Hut. And uh, it's going to be a good time. I can't wait. I love the Players' Championship. I love yeah. going down there, even for the practice rounds. It's just a blast. Um so catch us down there and catch us at Pat's house on Monday night. That show. Yeah, we got to have a good setup. I'm a little concerned about the setup here. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, although me and Sam did say that we are, this is the TDN. We, this is the technical difficult network, you know? So if, if we have some of that, that's perfectly fine. Um, and yes, so Karidi's in the chat, meaning yes, that means late night Instagram live stories from Tour Junkies. No. Oh, goodness. No. Yeah. That was bad. We should never have yeah, done that. Yeah, that, yeah. If anything, it means late night nut hut only stories. That way they're not, you know, publicly, too too publicly broadcasted out there. Yeah, so. and then some, you know, and then AC comes in and protects us later and just deletes it. <laughs> yes, yes. So. Also on next week's show, we're going to have a game of nut up or shut up. That's coming back for the second time in 2022. I've got my contestant, you know, teed up already. It's going to be exciting. Pat's going to host that along with producer Sam. And uh, we're giving away a Fujikira Ventus TR shaft. We've been talking about Fujikira for a while now. The new Ventus TR shaft, first introduced on the PJ Tour at the Amex, was banging. That that was like just, I mean, they crushed. Hoagie won it. Hoagie won with it at Pebble Beach, uh, along with the Spieth and Hostler, who finished second and third. It's the number one driver fairway hybrid shaft on the PJ Tour right now. They're crushing it. It's a the TR is a new mid launch, low profile, uh, new material added for con- additional stability to help you out if you spray it a lot. If you're a sprayer, TR is an addition to the Ventus line that already existed. Scotty Scheffler won with the Ventus Black in the driver. He switched in the last few weeks. He's killing it off the tee. We might talk about him tonight. It, Fujikira Venta shaft is killing it. All right. They're like averaging 38% of the whole field is using a Venta shaft. So it's available for $350 MSRP. You can buy it online or through custom fittings at any charter dealer right now. So if you're going to go get a driver, go get fit. Even if you suck, go get fit. But before you go, make sure that they sell Fujikira shafts. Pat, you ready for this? Yeah. You ready for this? All right. Um, it's kind of well, weird not doing the, not having to, you know, roll into the course breakdown like. Oh, um, I know, man. It's gonna, it's, just, it's a whole new world. But it gives us so much more time for activities. Yeah, and it saves my voice. You know, it saves your voice. That's why we did voice. it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Look, man, we're here How's for you. That Guinness. God, it's how stories. is the canned Guinness versus the uh, like an actual like I, Guinness I mean, from a from a good now. Guinness is very is like the it's like the most variable beer out there. I feel like it's like a golfer. Like oh. 
you can get a Guinness yeah. in some places and it really sucks. And you can get a Guinness out of a can and it's actually decent. We you and I have actually never been to like, you know, over there where they make Guinness, you know, where it would be really yeah. good, you know, like in Scotland and Ireland and stuff. Mm-hmm. I bet yeah. it's really good over there. But yeah. anyway. Um yeah, I, we're gonna go in June. So we'll we'll find out, and I'm sure it's way better. I, I think the variance comes from who, you know who's pouring it because there's so many different ways you pour it, right? Um, now I do prefer in on you know on tap, but at home, you know I have my I have my my can and I have a, a pour method. I've actually tested about three or four different pour methods that I've found on YouTube, and I have one that I actually like the most. So uh, that's I, I'm going with it, and it's delicious right now. I'm loving okay. it. I like a good Dennis Guinness. I say that. Um, all right, here we go. Top of the betting board up to 25 to one. Pat Bryson has withdrawn. He's hurt still. Poor he's, Bryson. He's like 90%, not a hundred percent. He doesn't want to go out there. Hates to disappoint his high school buddies that live with him. I mean, his fans and all that good <laughs> stuff, but he's out. He's withdrawing. So we won't be seeing the big, you know, the big, the big tee shot off the number six, cutting the corner, all that good stuff. I did play this golf course in the fall. This is a terrible golf course. I mean, it just I, I you keep I, saying that. I've heard that you know on this on the course preview. You mentioned it, I yeah. believe, even at the start of the the live odds look. And um, yeah, I just, why do you hate it so much? Because it was so it's so not memorable. There's nothing that. Number six is memorable only because of last year. Literally, that's it. That's the only thing you just walk, you come up to the tee and you look back at the pro tees and you look in the caddy tells you the line that he hit it on and you just go, holy crap, like, you know, dang. And then you aim 140 yards right of that and you hit your ball. 18 is the only memorable hole to me. That, 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 it's a tough hole, that big force yeah. carry. And then when you're standing on the green, all the, the, the curve of that green, and when you're standing on it, you're looking back, you see the Bay Hill sign. Yeah, that, that's it. Like, other than that, it's just a totally boring Florida golf course. If you took away all the Arnie stuff and all the, the stuff that's around it, it's just so boring. Now, I loved all the Arnie stuff, loved it. I walked through there and looked at everything. It was so cool. But it's just a regular Florida course. It really is. But here we go. Here we are. Top of the betting board. John Rahm's your favorite. Seven and a half to one on DraftKings. He's like eight to one a couple other places. You know, a lot of these numbers obviously shortened a little bit when Bryson withdrew. Uh, Victor Hovland was uh, around 20 to 22, maybe even in some places. He's dropped to 18 to one. You got Sung Jay, Will Zal Torres, Hideki, Fitzpatrick. Those are the kind, those are the names rounding out these uh, kind of the top of the board. If you're listening to us and you got deep pockets, you know, and you want to pay for you want to pay up for a favorite, because I will say that this is not a tournament that's returned a whole lot of long shots to us in recent years. Mark Leishman at hundred to one is the only one that we've really had in the last five or six years. I mean, for the most part, it's been short numbers. Bryson, Rory, Jason Day when he was good. Uh, Ricky, when he was good. So, you know, Francesco Molinari, I think, might have been one of the longer ones, maybe even Terrell Hatton at like 35 40, but it doesn't really get out of that range. No, so, it doesn't. This is a, I mean, well, also when you have Tiger winning this thing like seven eight or eight times, eight times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I said this on the, on the preview show. What, what do you, what do you think is more impressive? Tiger Woods winning this thing eight times or Matt Every winning it twice? Oh, oh, certainly Matt Every winning. It's it got to be Matt Every, right? <laughs> yeah. That's like Martin Trainer winning this thing twice. I mean, it's in the Puerto crazy. Rico this week twice. It's nuts. It really I don't is even impressive. understand how that happens. Um, You know what I forgot, Pat? God dang it, before we get into this. It's your birthday tomorrow, buddy. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> yes. Happy I, I actually birthday. Forgot. I forgot. Gosh about that. dang, everybody. It's Pat's birthday tomorrow. Pat, not, tell them how old you're going to be. No, I'm not going <laughs> to tell anybody how old I'm going to be. Uh, for a beer right now, but I'll yeah. give everybody a hint later. It's coming later. It's, but uh, uh, yeah, tomorrow is my birthday. I didn't really think we would do any celebrating of that tonight, but well, I tried to make some things happen, some special things happen for you, but I got to be honest, nobody would return my phone call. So I don't know. That's just, that's I probably bad. That's probably on me. Uh, that's on me. I'm sorry. I, mean, I, I I do want the people to 
comment on YouTube because we know the comments help us out. So if you want to give Pat a little Chris a little birthday gift, comment on the YouTube right now. What's your favorite thing about Pat? Your favorite thing about Pat Perry? What is it? He he loves he loves 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 verbal affirmation. Okay. Oh yeah. In yeah. this case, it's it written. Just give it to him. Okay. Put it in the comments on YouTube. If you're watching live, wait till the show's over, then put it in the comments. Okay. Some, anyway, some way, some way, somehow, some of these these folks will make comments that uh, is verbal affirmation that in is in a way is actually not positive, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no, no, truly, truly, your favorite thing about Pat. Okay, put that in the comment. Gosh dang, happy birthday, buddy. It's been. It's been great. Also, also, we should wish DirecTV Perry, your twin brother, happy birthday. Yes. Chris, love yes. you, man. I was born first, though. Uh, Pat was born first, so here we go. Um, I'm excited to see you next week, and and we'll we'll celebrate your birthday. Maybe we'll get in. We'll get deep into the podcast use to, uh, next week and for your birthday. Oh, I'm pl I'm planning on it. Planning okay. On it. Uh, all right, back to the betting board. Anybody okay. up here in the 25 up to 25 to one range? Oh, look at David speaks in the chat. Throwing out a hundred bucks in the super chat, the guy keeps winning bets. So he, he does. Should. Now that's happy birthday. Where's the money for continuing to just win all the money? I'm just kidding. I keep <laughs> shaking down David speaks every week. Thank you, man. We appreciate that. We'll make sure Pat gets it too. All right, you Pat. Know, this is all right. So top of the board here. There's not anything I really love. You know, I, I obviously I'm always a huge fan of Rory, but I I don't want to take him at, at ten to one. Um, two guys though that I think. Um, I think are, are worth playing here. I think Sung J M coming off of that. I, I know he's coming off of a miscut and everybody hates him right now, but at 22 to one, I actually, I like the number for him there. Um, you know, he's played this tournament well in the past. Um, and he was really playing pretty well up into up until the miscut last week. But at this course, at this tournament, he had two straight, T3s in 2019 and 2020. Actually, in 2020, it was solo third. T21 last year. Um, this is a good course for Sung Jay. Just like last week was a good course for Sung Jay, which which he won on, and he just he just had kind of a bad week. Um, so I will. I think Sung Jay at 22 to one is interesting. Another guy as well that I th that I that I like is Hideki at 25 to one. I, I think Hideki at 25 to one is is a good number there for him. Um, obviously has had a good year. Um, you know, I, I think he, he hasn't been great historically on this course. Now he makes a lot of cuts here. He's never missed a cut here. Yeah. So he, yeah, never missed a cut in seven tries. So um, I, I'm in agreement with you here on Hideki. But he does not have, you know, T18 last year was his best finish still 25 to one Hideki. I like, so those two right there, Decky, Sun JM. I like both of those. I like it. All right, so to piggyback on Hideki, I looked at, at how – all right, so why has he not played well here? Because it seems like it should be a place that he has played well. Well, he's killed it, T to green. I mean, absolutely killed it, T to green, at Bay Hill. But he has some putting performances here that are even bad for Hideki, like lost six strokes putting in 2020, lost over eight in 2019. In 2015, lost four and a half and still finished top 25. Um I just think, and if you look historically at Hideki, he, he, you know, average loses almost a stroke, you know, per round almost on, uh, on, or per tournament on the greens. But lately in the last, you know, few events, he's gaining, gained seven at the Sony when he won, gained three and a half at, at, uh, Scottsdale, gained one at the Genesis. Like, and we don't even have to be gaining Sun, you know, uh, Hideki. We can just be, you know, zero or just not five, and you'll be fine. The ball striking is there. I, I agree with you. I saw the twenty-five to one on Hideki, and there's a, a few of these guys that are twenty-five to one. And I thought, yep, I I like that. I like that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So he's one for me. I, I saw some early chatter on Twitter about Hovland, but I would rather take Scotty Scheffler in in that if I were gonna you know, kind of like make myself choose one or the other here. I think I'd just rather take Scotty. And, and I think primarily because I trust the, you know, I, I trust the around the green play a little bit more, even though I know Victor's improved. Uh, I trust that to get him out of trouble on a golf course that's difficult. This is one of the diff most difficult courses on the PJ Tour rotation. Um, 
so I, I don't know. I think I think I just lean more towards Scotty at that 16 to 1 number. He's only played here once in 2020, finished 15th. Victor's played here three times. His best finish is 40th. And he's actually gotten worse. He 40th in 2019, 42nd in 2020, 49th last year. So I don't know. I just think Scotty is also in obviously killer form coming off the win at Scottsdale. And um, you know, I, I just like where the complete package is, especially around the greens to save him and get him out of trouble a little bit if he needs it. So Scheffler and Decky for me. Yeah, I, I don't mind Scheffler either. I mean, I think this is just a, a, a year for him. I mean, we, we thought we were going to get a little bit of it last year, but, you know, the floodgates may have opened a little bit with him winning at, at, uh, at Waste Management. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of Scheffler this week. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move it on down. This is going to be a key range, as it usually is for us, um, but especially on a week where, like I said, you don't really see a lot of the long shots, like triple-digit guys get in there and do it. Uh, one of these guys in here, his odds are equivalent to how old Pat is turning tomorrow. He's one of my favorites. Maybe you'll figure it oh, out. Oh, gosh. Uh, why do you we... have to do why do we... you're, what? You're, such what? A, what? you're such an ageist. No, I'm not an ageist. I just I want yes, people. Yes, you are. You're an ageist. No, I'm not. I thought. Uh, by the way, speaking of Sung Jay, what did you say you had Sung Jay at? Because I thought I just saw him at a better number. I I I saw twenty two to one. He's at. I, I'm seeing twenty seven at Fanduel. I was wondering why I didn't have him. Um, and that could be wrong for now. I don't even see one of my guys on here. Was he on the last slide? He couldn't have been on the last slide. Who? Go ahead and tell it. Willie Z, Zalatoris, 30 to 1. Yeah, 30 to 1. I see him on points bet, 30 to 1. I, I love that. Awesome. Love that play. I'm all over that. I think we. Oh, he's 25 to 1 on DK. That's why he's not up here. Yeah. 30 to 1 on points bet. That's the best number on Willie Z. I'm total agreement with you. I mean, the long irons from Willie Z are incredible. That's going to be important this week. Very important this week. That's the thing about number six, like the, the, the drive that Bryson hit. Yes, it's very impressive. The The real advantage is that he doesn't have to worry about all that water on the left as he approaches that that green that slopes right to left. I mean, when I played that hole, I played it. I played the, the course twice, and both times I hit it in the fairway. You know, I you know, did all right, had it in the fairway. I had like 200, 225 in. That is a scary 200-yard, 225-yard shot. I can you know, imagine. To bail out, you know, you're going to snap hook it left in the water. It's water all the way down the left side. Anyway, I, I like Willie Z here a lot. I agree with you there at 30 to 1. Um, one of my favorites here, though, favorites is Keith Mitchell. Like, yeah. Everybody was all over Keith Mitchell last week at 30 to 1 or 34 to 1. That was a weak, it was a weak field. But I mean, dude, kill Pat Mayo calls him killer Keith because he's a killer. Like he he ain't he's been afraid. playing really well. He is playing lights out, man. Yeah. Speaking of Pat Mayo, I'll be on his show this week. Check that out. Going on tomorrow. Uh, the DraftKings preview. Um, Keith Mitchell at 45 to one, I think is money. And I think you got to grab that very quickly. Uh, I, I've, I've already gotten a piece of it. The form is great. The putting has been solid on these Florida Bermuda greens. This is where he's comfortable. Uh, I love, I love Keith Mitchell here. Definitely my favorite number at 45. Okay. I don't know why you're focusing on the number 45. Um, but Guinness. I don't mind Keith Mitchell there at 45 to one. Uh, another guy I like, I'm going to go two here and then maybe I'll flip it back to you. Mark Leishman. Mark well, there's Leishman a lot is, of agreement on this right now. He's right I around 35 to one, 33 mm -hmm. to one. Playing good. Um, playing well. The stats check out for him. Um, you know, he's got a good course history here. Um, so I, I think. You know, you look at par five scoring is one of the stats that I like. Uh, he's top 20 there. Um, I, I think, again, like last week, you look a little bit at bogey avoidance. Um, this is a very tough golf course. He's top 15 in the field in strokes gain putting on Bermuda grass. So I like Leishman there right around 35 to 1, if you can get him there, 33 to 1, somewhere around in there. I'm going to go back on Cbez this week, okay? Going back in on Cbez. you know, he had – a pretty bad round, I believe, on Saturday, which was the toughest day at the Honda, but played really well on Sunday um, last week. I, I think, you know, you're getting him again at 55 to 1. 
He's also got some pretty good course history here. Um, he is, uh, hang on, let me give you a little history. He finished top 10 last year, T18 in 2020. So going back to him, going to, going to get, go back to Cbez there at 55 to 1. Okay, I, I, when I was starting to do the research, I saw Cbez And I was like, oh, hey there, Cbez what's up, dog? How you doing, man? Oh, yeah, you had the rat poison thing, and you... You know, you got a, um, you got a, a, some damage as a result. That stinks, man. But you know, can you win? And I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I, as I start, I started to write him down because I'm like, oh, here he well, is you're, again. Well, you're Here's always, C-Bez. you're always the one that says they can't win until they win. I know. <laughs> but but Cebes doesn't feel like that guy. Like he's not been around that long. Like we've just kind of he started to become the shiny object here, right? And he and he's 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 a solid player. Like he's a, that's the thing about guys like this. Like he's a solid player across the board. He doesn't suck at anything, but he's also not great at anything. And like he doesn't have something about his game that's just dominant consistently over and over again. And so then all all that needs to happen is the one thing that's kind of constantly giving him problems is a little bugaboo. You know, all that, all of a sudden he finds a magic bean and Wiener pop, you know, here we go. And now he's his bugaboos, you know, good. And so then he wins. Like, but he's just kind of average at everything. And so he's never going to – I just – I'm wondering if he's ever going to win. Could you could you win money on him betting top 20s, top 40s, if you want to do that? Well, if you, if heads, you want yeah. it, I think that's an important point too. Some of these plays, because we're giving you all outrights right now, doesn't mm-hmm. mean if you can find a, what you think is a good number as a top 10 or a top 20 on a lot of these guys, um, not the shorter ones, but – you know, even even Cbez is six to one as a top ten. You know, you you put a decent amount of money on that. I like it as a top ten. So you know, maybe he's, you don't uh, like the outright. He's South African, right? And he won the last. So he's won twice worldwide. And he won. I remember that he won back to back weeks in 2020. Mm-hmm. He won the South African Open and the Alfred Dunhill. Alfred Dunhill, way more impressive. South African Open, like the South Africans dominate that thing. Like they just dominate it. But he's never won since then. He's had some top, you know, fives. Uh, actually, no, he hasn't. He had a top five of the BMW PGA of the European Tour event. That's it. That's the only other top five he's ever sniffed. He does have a seventh place finish here, uh, but last year, 2021. I don't know, man. I just I started I mean, to click Straka it. Straka like, just won last week. <laughs> yes, Straka is one of those guys that like he's a bomber. He dominates yeah. off the tee. The iron, the the iron play can, can you know can get nuclear hot. He just needs to have one of those weeks where he makes some putts, right? Yeah. I don't speaking know. Speaking of bomber, that drive he hit on eighteen, my was, goodness. Speaking of that, you know, he, he really did get. I will say, I'm not gonna. I think Shane Lowry was being a little bit of a, a little bit of a bitch. Okay, about about <laughs> yeah about what happened to him in that on that last hole. But you you have to agree that Straka got a little bit more luck than than Lowry did at the end there. But that's golf. That happens. That happens. Our, the guys in no land up say that's the rub of the green. You know yeah. what I mean? Um. All right, where are we? We're in the we, six. We got off on the Cbez the Cbez conversation. Yeah. We're up to 75 to one. Okay. Still I, in that range. I love this range. So we're going to give you more names in here. And I got a couple more too. I mean, Kokrak at 50 to one. I, yes. You're talking yes. about a guy who doesn't win until they win. Then he rattles off wins. Kokrak, you know, I mean, he does, he does certain things like really, really well, right? He hits the shit out of it off the tee pretty consistently. And his iron plays is, is quite good. And the putter's been pretty solid, right? So he won the Houston back in the fall, uh, 17th at the Sony, 26th at the Genesis. He, I feel like he's, you know, I feel like he's heating up. He's ready to go. At the Arnold Palmer, uh, he's got quite the record here, too. He's only got two missed cuts in like nine years. I mean, three top, four top tens in nine years here. Clearly, Kokrak loves this place. And that's only gaining strokes in three of these nine attempts on the putting green. And he's actually not that bad. He's not that terrible of a putter. He struggled a little bit here on these greens, but T to green, he's been a stud. 50 to one feels like the right number for him. Uh, and then speaking of another guy, maybe I'm maybe I'm talking, maybe I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here. Yes, maybe you are. Is Tringali like the American Cbez? I don't know. I feel like Tringali <laughs> is ready to win. He's got a, a 
he's how many top fives has this guy had where he just he could have done it and he didn't and i feel like that maybe that's the difference because you know a third just a few weeks ago at the farmers a second at the zozo last year uh, a third at the valspar last year a third at the rsm and late 2020 like the guy has plenty of top fives he's been in contention he just never closes the door but dang it if if his numbers aren't attractive 65 to 1 for uh for tringali the record at the arnold palmer's solid four out of five cuts made but i mean checks you know checks the long like the long iron box um he's like 14th in this field there, uh, I, I kind of looked at strokes game putting on these Florida, Bermuda, Tiff Eagle greens. He's 20th in the field in the strokes game putting uh, on that. Like He just does everything really solid. So I think Tringali is probably another one for me in this range. Okay. Um, do you have any interest in Jason Day at 65 nope. to 1? I don't. I mean, I remember a few weeks ago you mentioned Jason Day, and I didn't think you were going to mention him. He's been playing pretty well. Yeah, well, well, what's I mean, his short he's game. He's obviously he's held got a good everywhere. history here. He's he's won this tournament. I mean, ha, um, hasn't hasn't it been all about a short game? Yes, it has. It's still he's still. I think he's sucking. Won this tournament. Is that right? Yes, he did win this tournament. Um, he is still terrible with his iron play, terrible, and he's spraying the ball all all over the place off the tee. But he's I mean, saving he was, himself. He was literally in contention just a few weeks. I know. Ago. Well, okay, so that was a that was a one of those weeks where he gained three point two strokes tee to green, and he hadn't done that since July of the year of twenty twenty one. I I feel like I'm gonna get. I feel like I'm gonna have some Jason Day. I'm sorry. I, I like, like sixty five to one. You're gonna be in the tilt your ass off channel of the Nut Hut uh, on Jason Day come Friday. Well. Oh, come Friday, not even Sunday. You're not even going to give me till Sunday to sweat out. No, you're going to be mad about it on, on Friday. Okay. I have a feeling. All right. Well, that's it for me in this, in this yeah. range. Who else you got? We named a lot of guys here, but I, I do. This is it's the range. Good, yeah. This and I'm going to have three in the next two ranges. So uh, I have five in the next two ranges. Okay. Um, one we'll of the probably things. probably have some that are doubled up, I bet. Yeah, we, we may. Uh, listen here. Most of y'all's coffee is dull, is stale. You need to do something different. Mm. Uh, it's probably questionably sourced, you know, like you could have got your coffee for something. But it's easy to get stuck in a rut and drink what you always have. Instead of standing in front of all the options at your grocery store, let our friends at Trade Coffee help you find something new to love. All right. Trade sells the freshest roasted and ethically sourced beans from America's best independent roasters. They ship to you for free and as often as you like in whole or ground. Whether you're a coffee nerd, you just want a better, you know, daily cup of brew. Trade's real coffee expert. It's taste less, uh, they, they taste over 400 roasts, and they use technology to match your ideal coffee based on your preferences and brewing method. You go on the website, you take the coffee quiz to get started, and they guarantee you're going to love your first bag or they'll replace it for free. And the coffee quiz is good. It's detailed. You know, how do you brew it? What do you put in it? Yeah. What, what are you drinking it for? What's your machine? You know, uh, you know, how high is your wife? Scale of one to 10. No, they don't ask you that. Trade has been featured by the New York Times, Wired, GQ, and has delivered over 5 million bags of coffee. Their subscription is a no hassle. It skips shipments. It changes. Uh, you can change your frequency or cancel at any time. All right. I'm still drinking my trade coffee. It's delicious. I put it in my little K cup thing, and you have your fancy machine, and it is what it is. Oh, let me tell elitist, you something. Elitist coffee maker you have. Oh, this, this, their coffee is so good. Look, I let me tell you, like I, this coffee maker that I have. That's about to hijack my my ad read to make it three minutes. Let me just tell you, it's it's a good coffee maker. It rejects bad coffee. It will not let bad coffee go through that. It won't pull a good espresso. And this trade coffee, it, it's like it it just loves it. It loves it. It's okay. so good. Well, for our listeners, right now, Trade Coffee is offering a total of $20 off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com slash tour junkies. To get started, take the quiz at drinktrade.com slash tour junkies and start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash tour junkies for $20 off your first three bags. All right, all right, here we go. Seventy Over 75 to 1, up to about 130 to 1. I got two names, Pat. The first one is my favorite one at 80 to 1. I'm going to 
pound this dude. I know what this is going to be. In DFS, in outright betting, in top 20 betting. I can't wait to see the head-to-head matchups on him, Manana. Who's it going to be, Pat? Who do you think it is? I think it's going to be Cameron Young. It is not Cameron Damn. Young. Okay, good. All right, good. That's that's good. Okay. not Cameron Young. Uh, it is uh, Mr. Alanto Griffin uh, at 80-1. Eh. to one. T36 here is first time out in 2020. T21 last year, and the form is looking very nice right now. Okay. 39th at the Genesis, 16th at the Pebble, third at the Amex. Uh, we saw two top sevens back in the fall. Winner on the PGA Tour. Um, I mean, Lonto, he won the Houston Open. Did he win something else, dude? He won the Houston and the another. Did he win like a. I thought he won two events. Why is this only showing one? I swear he won two. Anyway, PGA Tour winner. Lonto Griffin. Great iron player. Checks the box. Long irons, too. Uh, I, I'm just. I'm a big fan of Lanto. I love that 80 to one number. I think that's a lot of value for, for Lanto. And then I'm going to go with, I don't think this is going to happen, but he, he just rated out so well in my first little model build that I ran. But Tom Hoagie is a hundred to one. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like in this field with the model and the time frames I ran third in approach, 27th in good drives gained 16th in bogey avoidance. I looked at ball striking at Arnold Palmer over the last few rounds, last few years. Eighth there. Uh, long iron play is solid. I mean, you know, obviously he's coming off of his first PJ Tour victory, but Hoagie, Hoagie's looking good at 100 to 1. Like, that's a really good, that's a really good value for old, old Hoagie. He's played here three times, missed the cut last year, 15th the year before, 26th the year before that. Those are the only two for me in that range. Uh, Lonto looks like the better number for him is at MGM. And uh, Hoagie on on DraftKings right now. Well, um, I wasn't really on Lonto, obviously, because I thought you were going to say Cam Young. Um, I will say, um, who did you said Hoagie? Hoagie is plus three thirty as a top twenty, which I think is pretty good. Um, but we can get into that later. Yeah. Um, I think Cam Young though is a good play, and you know. Last year seemed to be the year year of Cam Davis. This year is the year of Cam Ooh. Young. Okay. Um, if you look at the stats for him heading into this event, he's second in the field in strokes gained off the tee. He's balling right now for I sure. Mean, the dude is balling. He's top 30 in the field in strokes gained putting on Bermuda grass. Um, basically across the field. I mean, top 50 in approach, top 50 in good drives gained, top 50 in bogey avoidance. You know, he's made his last five cuts. Um, you know, he's, he's just been extremely solid, you know, across the board. Now he is, um, he is a rookie to this event. He has not played it before. And I do like a little bit of experience, but you're getting him at 80 to one. I think that's a good number for him. So I like Cam Young there. I like Denny McCarthy at nope. 130 to one. Nope. Not getting sucked into Denny. Not doing it. I'm doing Denny. I'm going to do Denny. Okay. I'm going to Denny's this week. I'm going to Denny's and I'm gonna get some eggs over medium on some with some bacon and eggs, and I might even put some fish on the side. Okay. Ugh, that's what God, that's what I'm really gonna do. That? Some shrimp or something. Maybe not fish, some shrimp at Denny's. 130 to one. You would I eat mean, shrimp from Denny's? I don't know. I was just trying are to you think. Are you 100 years? How old are you I turning? I was trying part? to think of the things that come with Denny's. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, Captain. Denny's has shrimp? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of Captain Captain D's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Producer Sam just said that should go on the bet wheel. You have to eat shrimp from Denny's. You have to order fish. I bet you shrimp. I bet you Denny's has shrimp, though. You you have to. No, I would not eat. I would not eat. Like if you're gonna have some shrimp from Denny's, if they make it, it's got to be fried. Like you can't have some like some bowl of shrimp on the menu right now. And you can't. And if you have to do this, you cannot use any sauces or condiments. You have to take it down without. Got to be fried. There's no way they have anything. If they have shrimp on the menu, they don't have. They don't have anything but fried. What? Uh, who? Who? Who thinking of Denny's goes to shrimp and fish? Because things were flying around in my head and i started thinking about denny's for breakfast and then i started thinking about like does denny's have dinner and then captain d flew into my head and i was thinking oh wait <laughs> maybe cap maybe denny's is like captain d's oh god 
Um, I don't Just, even know where. <laughs> you're a Denny McCarthy. How much you've loved Denny McCarthy? Here. All right, 130 to one, Denny McCarthy. That's all I got. I'm not gonna get into it anymore because that whole conversation just threw me off. All right. But doesn't he have a pretty good history here, though? Does he? Uh, let me find Denny now. That no, no t t26 last year missed missed the cut in uh so in 2020. So it's decent, not bad. But um. Yeah. What is has Sam found anything out about this video? <laughs> By the way, he's been playing really well. I mean, you, you say you want to go, you, you don't even want any, anything to do with him. T6 at the American Express, top 15 at Pebble Beach. Missed okay, American Express putting contest. That's the word. Okay, so uh, missed the cut at Phoenix. Honda, tough course, T30. That's that. I think that's probably peak Denny at the Honda. Golden fried shrimp. Yes, at Denny's. Oh, that's killing on the bet wheel. Somebody's gonna take down a platter of golden fried shrimp from Denny's, and they have scampi. I would actually, I would oh. probably try scampi. A little butter on that? That's butter shrimp. That's butter shrimp. You'd have to I have all, all the butter in Denny's. I don't even call it scampi. I just call it butter shrimp. Is that what it is? That's what it. Yeah, that's just what I call it. Your mom's butter shrimp. Uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. I, we're, Okay, get moving on to the Let's long go. shots. I have get, two in here. I got one. And uh Are his you name is steal mine? Okay, no, you go ahead. I don't want to steal yours. Go. All right, I have two. Did I say one? I have two. You said two. I have Andrew Putnam at 150 to one. Okay. T four last year. Um you look at uh you look at. he's got he's got some stats. He's got some stats that <laughs> add up. Top 10 in strokes gained approach. He is 20th in good drives game. Top 10 putting on Bermuda. So I do like Andrew Putnam there. Here's a guy that sucks when it comes to stats, but he's actually played fairly well recently, and he's a pretty good long shot. And that is Mr. Bo Hostler at 200 to 1. Look, listen. Just look how he's played recently. Yeah, he's played. He's played good for Bo Hoss. T sixteen at the Honda. Mm -hmm. T forty eight at Genesis. Mm -hmm. Third at Pebble Beach. I know it's a totally different course than what we're getting right now, but I mean, Bo Hostler's playing well. Mm -hmm. Two hundred to one. Yeah, I mean, okay. throw a dollar on that. Yeah. Uh no, uh, I would not have stolen any any either one of those from you. My one play here is at 150 to one on DraftKings. He is a PGA Tour winner. Uh, his name is Carlos Ortiz, Ooh, 27th nice. in this field in strokes gained approach, 55th in good drives gained. Ball striking at Bay Hill has been solid in his attempts here. Checks a box in like the long iron, mid iron game. Uh, got enough pop in the bat that I think he'll he'll be able to approach these greens with uh, shorter clubs, higher lofted ball flights, hold these these firm and fast greens, get over all these forced carries. Carlos Ortiz can be a killer when he's uh, when he's on, and um, you know he's doing okay. I mean, n didn't have great showings at the Phoenix and Genesis. I mean, thirty third, thirty ninth, he was terrible around the greens, but. The, the ball striking, the iron play has been there. You know, if he can if he can come up with a little bit of magic around the greens, Carlos Ortiz could win. He is he's a stud. So I mean, runner up at the Mayakoba, you know, in the fall. I mean, Mayakoba, what an event that is. Winner of the Houston Open. I guess I'm really liking Houston Open winners to, this week with Lonto and uh, Carlos Ortiz. So maybe that's maybe there's something to that. Uh, all right, that's it for me. No more outright picks. Let's get to our let's talk about our favorite outright bets that we just mentioned like give me the favorite ones the ones you got to jump on early the ones we think that you know the line could get shorter and two or three four maybe of your favorite top 20s presented by covers covers.com winning starts at covers start your sports betting process at covers.com and check out our free article that drops on tuesday afternoons top 20s head to heads that we like over there but we threw out a few names you know some outright names that we like but who are the favorites pat who are the ones you like the most, you know, if uh, the ones you think have the best chance of cashing, you know, at a good number, or do you think you're going to get shorter? Well, I will start with Decky. I think Decky is one at 25 to one that could end up a little bit shorter. I don't think it'll get shorter than 20 to one, but 
I, I just I, I love Decky this year. I think um like you mentioned, um if he if he just has you know, he's been great tee to green on this course, has a good putting week, I think he can win. So twenty five to one Hideki. Will Zalatoris, I like him as well. Um I, I think, you know, you see him at that thirty to one number, but I really feel like that's gonna end up shorter at twenty five to one. Um, and, and in that range. So if you can get him at 30 to one, I would go ahead and jump on that now. And finally, I will say, um, I'm not going to go too long because I love that 25 to 75 to one range. I, I'm still, again, I, I like Sebes. I like Vazudenhout right there at 55 to one. I, I don't know if that number is going to get shorter, but, you know, I was on him last week. He, did, he didn't win for me, which that was okay. I was fine with, with Straka winning, but uh, I'm going to go back on him this week. And uh, so those are my three three favorites there, Hideki, Zalatoris, and Sebez. Okay. I agree with you on, on Hideki and Zalatoris. I think my three favorites would be Keith Mitchell at 45-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, Dude's really hot right now. Obviously loves playing in the Southeast on that Bermuda. Plenty of distance. Keith Mitchell could rattle off another win here very easily and i think 45 is going to get shorter that's on DraftKings for now uh jason kokrak at 50 to 1 i like that one i feel like that one's another just supreme value on a player that has a great record here is rounding into form a little bit here as we've as he's had a few events under his belt to get warmed up get heated up ready for a, a good run in 2022 you know he's been honest about all the saudi stuff so he, he doesn't have to worry about you know i mean at least he's come out and said yeah i'm playing for the money so He's not like in Phil's situation, so he he's probably doing okay. And then I think I think Lonto Griffin at eighty to one is another one of just my favorite values. Lonto played well here a couple times. The form is solid. The long iron play is very good. PJ Tour winner, so I think Lonto Griffin uh, at eighty to one is the other value for me. In the top twenty market, I will go Keith Mitchell plus one fifty for a top twenty. Feels like a lock. Just feels like a lock. Like that's a lock. I can't go a betting show when someone who checks all the boxes that they check, okay, all the boxes that they do check. I can't go a betting show without mentioning Luke List. So I'll mention him at plus 240 as a top 20 here. I mean, just in the last in his last four attempts at Bay Hill, he's got a T10, a T7, a T17. Luke, huh? What, what do you say? I mean, yeah, after he won the Farmers and we hit him at 75-1, to 1, he went 53rd, miscut. That's not great. But ball striking still been solid. Tee to green still solid. It's all about that putter. Let's see what can happen with Luke. Plus 240, top 20. And then I'm going to go Keegan Bradley at plus ooh, 350. Ooh, ooh. Keegan. <laughs> oh, Keegan. Now, I mean, Keegan can be one of the more frustrating players to – to bet on, roster, what, whatever. Uh, he's been playing here since 2011. He's missed one cut, okay? He's got uh, three top 20s in his attempts here at the Arnold Palmer. And recent form, you know, not bad. 12th at the Sony, 26th at the Phoenix Open was probably his, his – those were his best two starts in 2022. Ball striking's there, putter's not. Story of Keegan's life, story of – Sports golf betters is that they love Keegan Bradley from a stat standpoint, and then he disappoints them. But plus 350, I'll take a ride. And then uh, one more top 20 bet. This one's going to shock you, Pat. And this one's deep. This one's six to one. Okay. Six to one top 20. Danny Willett. Ooh. Danny Willett. I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, you like little Danny Willett. I know you do. Yeah. Uh, Danny Willett. De you say Danny Willett. Yes. Decent record at the API and four attempts made three cuts. 31st, 18th, and 29th are uh, what he's done here at Bay Hill. Played last week, and I liked what I saw. The putter was terrible. It was really bad. But Tita Green gained 5.6 strokes, gained off the tee, gained with the irons. And, and you know, he's always been a bad putter, but he's not been – I mean, like, last week was really bad. So you would think, like, okay, getting, getting used to some things on the Tiff Eagle Bermuda, you know, what's – you know, he's, he's shaking the rust off his Tiff Eagle Bermuda prowess. So now he's going to go right back to another course with Tiff Eagle Bermuda where he's actually gained strokes putting two out of his four attempts at the Arnold Palmer. He's actually gained strokes putting. So that's that's tough for him to do. So Danny Will at 6-1, that's a long shot. Okay. Um, 
All right, a few top 20s for me. I like Cam Young, as I mentioned, as an outright. I still like him also as a top 20, obviously, plus 330 there on that number. He's got three top 15s, I mean, three top 20s in his last five events. Um, so Cam Young there, I think that is a good play. I like Tom Hoagie, who you mentioned earlier, uh, at plus 330. I think that's a good top 20. And then old party Marty Laird Whoa. is at plus 450 for a top 20. Now, here's the thing about Martin Laird. If you're going to throw a model together, he's going to he's gonna end up in your model. I guarantee you. It, whatever stats you look at, he's going to be top 10 in your model, except for putting. Which is really so. By the way, has he withdrawn? Because <laughs> no. you were smiling at me like you're like, oh, no, no, God, no. I'm, I'm, about just... to, I'm about to slam back because he's breaking the <laughs> no. Um, But, right. you know, playing well recently, um, did have a top 15 finish at the Phoenix Open. So I, I think a party Marty could be an interesting play here. And I believe he has actually a, a, a decent a decent course history here. Um, if you look at the last few years here, um let me find him here yeah uh, t49 in 2017 top 26 in 2018 miscut in 2019 t43 in 2021 but plus 450 you know he gets hot with the putter this week okay i think Mar i think party marty could be could be a decent play there all right, there's some long shot top 20s for you for sure and the outrights that we think uh, you need to jump on now presented by covers go to covers.com all right, Pat, let's get to the final segment of the betting show tonight, the prize pick segment. Of course, you'll have the Fantasy Golf Sommelier out next week, uh, or not next week, tomorrow night or Wednesday morning, I guess. What's what's today? Freaking Monday? Yeah. It'll come out Wednesday morning. It'll come out Wednesday morning. You'll have your round one prize picks plays, Fantasy Golf Sommelier video. Great video. Check that out on YouTube. Last week, we didn't do so good, Pat. Uh, I went one and or the prize pick segment on the show went one and two. Uh, FGS went one, two, and one. That was your first losing week on FGS, but you've been pretty solid there. Um, this week, let's. I think let's... I hit though my play on the show. Palmer. You did, yeah, I think you did because I did, did not. I did not include him in the FGS. So, oh. if you... dang it. Okay. So yeah, you, you did hit it. If you if you count that, it was two, two, and one. But there anyway. you go. Not a losing, not a losing record. Um, all right, here's my play. Look now, if you one play, right... one play. If you look, yes, if you look right now. I feel like the the total strokes are a little off right now for day one. Now I don't I have not looked at the weather and maybe you talked about the weather a little bit on the course breakdown. I don't even know. Um but they're they're a little high for me right now. Um uh, really across the board. And but I mentioned Willie Z, so Will Zalatoris being a big yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of him this week. Yeah, he's at 71 and a half. Okay, for total strokes for day one, I'm going to take the under on yeah. that. I think he can at least shoot two under on this course as a par 72. Um, so Willie Z at 71 and a half is is going to be going to be I love play that. this night. Absolutely love that, Pat. Fantastic job there. Um, I actually had a willie z play as well um i'll save it uh you talked about sung jm earlier i like the sung j over 11 and a half greens and regulation mm. uh deal for thursday i mean obviously you talked about how well sung j has played this event before two third place finishes in a 21st uh tita green has been very good uh at this event uh, you know, and Sung Jay's a Tita Green guy anyway. And even though he did miss the cut last week, I think uh, he still gained strokes. Tita Green, he just didn't have, he had a very bad putting week. So I like the over 11 and a half. So to hit 12 out of 18 greens and reg, I think that's, I think that's doable for Sung Jay for sure. He's going to hit a lot of fairways. Um, and he's just, he just doesn't make a lot of really bad mistakes with his irons. Uh, so I'd like that. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to give you an under because the unders are hard to find. But I'm going to give you an under. And it's on a guy that I went off on last week. And I was right. He sucked. Old Tommy Kankles. Tommy Fleetwood. Yes. Tommy Fleetwood missed the cut. He was the second guy off the betting board last week at 16 to 1, which I said was stupid. Uh, now, you know, if you look at Tommy, uh, Tommy has 
Tommy has played well here before, very, very well. Just like, just like he had last last yeah. week at the Honda. But he's not, he's not been the same. He has not been the same. The over under on fairways hit for Tommy on round one is at nine and a half fairways um, out of fourteen fairways, and I'm going to take the under on that. The average for this event, you know, the greens and regulation number is is pretty difficult compared to other PJ Tour events, but actually, you know, the fairways haven't been that hard to hit because a lot of guys club down here. I don't know that Tommy clubs down as much as others, but the average fairways hit just in total since 2015 from everyone is at nine and a half. It's like 60 something percent. It comes out to nine and a half. So it's right at average, right? So price picks has set the line dead average. One of the interesting things I looked at is on fantasy national, you can look at fairways gained, right? And if you just looked at fairways gained from like, let's say the last 24, 12, whatever recent rounds, a guy like Adam Scott is going to be way off the mark on that. He's going to be like 90th in the field, right? If you, and, and Tommy Fleetwood's going to be pretty, pretty decent. If you go down and you just say, give me Bay Hill, give me Bay Hill the last like three or four years, fairways hit. And Adam Scott becomes pretty good. And Tommy Fleetwood, not so good. Tommy Fleetwood, 54th in this field in the last three years in fairways gained at Bay Hill. Adam Scott, for example, 38th. They, they literally flip-flopped when you took all the courses in the last you know couple, couple tournaments together versus Bay Hill. Why is that? Well, I think because Adam Scott hits the ball a long way, so he clubs down you know probably more often or better than Tommy Fleetwood does at Bay Hill. He hits more fairways. Tommy apparently doesn't do that. Then he's 54th in this field. So I'm taking the under. Tommy Ladd, under on fairways. And watch him hit like 14 freaking fairways, and I look like an idiot. Let me tell I you something. I was this. all anti-Fleetwood last week on prize picks, and I believe I took the under on fairways for him in the FGS. I could be wrong, and I think he beat me by one fairway. Of course he did. Yeah, okay, great. So it's going to be a sweat for you, but I think it's a good It's a good play. It's a good play. I made I a think sound gonna... argument. You did make a great Absolutely. argument, but it's still going to end up being a sweat for you. Okay. There we go. There you have it. That's the betting show for the Arnold Palmer Invitational 2022. We're going to head over to the DraftKings show here in just a minute. Uh, be sure and leave a comment. Your favorite thing about Pat. It's his birthday on Tuesday. Uh, well, happy birthday, Pat. Thank you for being you. And uh, listen, everybody, let's have a great week. Let's hit another winner. You know what I mean? Congrats to Pat, 140 to one. It's his birthday week now. He's got to hit another winner. This Let's has got to yeah. happen. Got to hit it. Let's All do right. it. Time to bend over your bookie. See ya.